So the first muscle of the anterior compartment that we're going to be talking about today is the tibialis anterior muscle. And this muscle originates from the lateral surface of the tibia, the lateral condyle of the tibia, and the interosseous membrane of the leg. The interosseous membrane is a thin sheet of fibrous connective tissue linking the two bones of the leg, the tibia, and the fibula. And the tibialis anterior then goes on to insert at the base of the metatarsal of the big toe and the plantar surface of the medial cuneiform bone, which is one of the tarsals. If we add this image here, which is an inferior view of the bones of the foot, we can see these points of the insertion a little bit more clearly. So here we have the metatarsal of the big toe, and over here we can see the medial cuneiform bone. So what does the tibialis anterior do? Well, when this muscle contracts, it causes dorsiflexion of the foot at the ankle joint, which, as we can see, decreases the angle between the dorsum of the foot and the leg. And this muscle is also responsible for inversion of the foot. An inversion of the foot involves tilting the sole of the foot towards the midline of the body, like we can see here. The tibialis anterior also supports the medial longitudinal arch of the foot. Speaking of muscle functions, if you want to know even more about the actions of each of the muscles mentioned in this video, why not take some time later on to check out our awesome 3D muscle function video series on the lower limb. Here you'll be able to watch each muscle performing its function in isolation and visualise every single movement without missing a thing. In order for the tibialis anterior to perform its functions, it requires innervation, and it's supplied by the deep fibular nerve, which is also known as the deep perineal nerve. Note that the terms fibula and perineal are interchangeable, but throughout our tutorial we'll use the word fibula. The deep fibular nerve supplies all of the muscles in the anterior compartment, and it originates from the sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve bifurcates into the tibial nerve and the common fibular nerve, and the common fibular nerve then divides into the superficial fibular nerve and our nerve of interest, the deep fibular nerve. Located lateral to the tibialis anterior, we find the extensor digitorum longus. And this muscle originates from the lateral condyle of the tibia, the head of the fibula, the anterior border of the fibula, and the interosseous membrane of the leg. It then splits into four tendons and inserts onto the bases of the middle and distal phalanges of the lateral four toes. The extensor digitorum longus is responsible for dorsiflexion of the foot at the ankle joint and extension of the lateral four toes at the metatarsophalangeal and interphalangeal joints. And as we can see in our image, extension of the toes pulls them towards the leg, decreasing the angle between the toes and the leg. So this muscle also causes eversion of the foot, which involves tilting the sole of the foot away from the midline of the body. And like the tibialis anterior, the extensor digitorum longus is innervated by the deep fibula nerve, which we can see here highlighted in green. Before we move on, I've got, I do want to mention the fibularis tertius. So the fibularis tertius is normally connected to the extensor digitorum longus and is therefore usually considered as part of this muscle. It originates from the anterior border of the fibula and inserts onto the base of the metatarsal of the little toe. When the fibularis tertius contracts, it causes dorsiflexion of the foot at the ankle joint and eversion of the foot. And this muscle is also innervated by the deep fibular nerve. The last muscle of the anterior compartment of the leg is the extensor hallucis longus. So in terms of origin points, this muscle originates from the medial surface of the fibula and the interosseous membrane of the leg. It then goes on to insert at the base of the distal phalanx of the big toe. And this muscle is responsible for dorsiflexion of the foot at the ankle joint and extension of the big toe at the metatarsophalangeal and interphalangeal joints. So as we can see in our image, extension of the big toe pulls it towards the leg, decreasing the angle between the big toe and the leg. Again, this muscle is innervated by the deep fibular nerve. So while we're here, I just wanted to take a minute to talk about some retinacula. So retinacula are fibrous bands that act like seat belts for the tendons of your muscles. They hold them in place so that they can't move around freely under your skin. So the superior extensive retinaculum passes from the fibula to the tibia proximal to the malleoli and it binds the tendons of the muscles of the anterior compartment of the leg before they cross the ankle joint. Moving inferiorly, we can see the inferior extensor retinaculum. And as you can see, the inferior extensor retinaculum is Y-shaped. And this structure runs from the calcaneus, which is the largest tarsal bone of the foot. It then splits into two, attaching to the medial malleolus and the plantar aponeurosis. 
and the inferior extensor retinaculum binds the tendons of the muscles of the anterior compartment of the leg after they cross the ankle joint. Before we move on to the lateral compartment of the leg, let me just summarize some key points about the anterior compartment. So the anterior compartment is made up of four muscles, the tibialis anterior, the extensor digitorum longus, the fibularis tertius, and the extensor hallucis longus. And these muscles work together to perform dorsiflexion of the foot at the ankle joint. And they're all innervated by the deep fibular nerve. If you found this quick anatomy or physiology video helpful, you'll enjoy our video tutorials even more. Click on the button and you'll see what I mean. We have hundreds of videos available to our premium members, not to mention all the fun quizzes, complete articles and atlas sections to solidify your knowledge. Click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy and physiology.